excuse the mess. We got a lot of stuff going on and we decided, hey, let's shoot a fly tying slash informative video. Um, what we're doing is we're doing like a bass fishing, not necessarily a tutorial, how do you say it? Eh, tutorial, I guess, I don't know. We're just gonna go over some basic bass patterns that we fish that are pretty dang effective just about anywhere you fish. I mean, and if you're, if we're talking bass, I'm, I'm talking mostly just like warm water species in general, you know, bass, large mouth, small mouth, striped bass, wiper, white bass, um, even into like crappie, a lot of bluegill eat some of these bugs. Um, but there's all kinds of fish that these flies catch, but specifically we're talking about bass. So first off, I don't know if this is gonna go in focus or not. This little crayfish pattern that I tie. Uh, it's on a jig hook, so it keeps it riding hook point up so that you're not snagging on the bottom the whole time. It's got a 5.5 millimeter tungsten bead, so it's super, super heavy. As you see, it's pretty simple. I mean, a little bit of rubber leg action. Not a whole lot going on though with it, um, but it gets the job done for sure. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna put it together real quick. I'm gonna show you guys. form because we're gonna add a pl oh I forgot the bead oh that sucks anyways back where I was <laughs> before I forgot the bead I guess technically after I forgot the bead Crawfish is a major, major part of a, of a bass's diet. But one thing to keep in mind too, um, when these things, I think it's molting, right? Molting is when they lose their shell, I'm assuming. Um, when these things molt, that's when they become super, super effective. Cause like, imagine eating lobster if lobster didn't have a shell. Because that is basically what these are for fish. I mean, I don't know if you guys have eaten crayfish or not, but they're delicious. Um, so when they lose the shell, they are completely vulnerable and they are just soft chunks of meat that are crawling around or waiting to grow their shell, I guess. So that's the first one. Next bug is one of John Barr's patterns. It's called a meat whistle. This thing, I don't know what it is about this fly, but it is just so damn good. But this is just a little white variation of it. Um, it's got a white cone head. It's on a jig hook. Your choice on the hook you want to use. Um, I like cheap flies because I lose a lot of flies. Kyle loses a lot of my flies that I tie. So many flies. Um, so this one, I just tie it on a, like a heavy wire eagle claw jig hook. That jig hook that is totally fine. Um, so yeah, so we'll start throwing this one together.
Well, Kyle just informed me that I forgot the legs on this pattern. So this, <laughs> this is what it's supposed to look like. Do the legs matter? Probably not. Does it make it look cooler? Maybe. <laughs> but they're pretty close. Anyways, that's the second one. That's, that's Bar's Meat Whistle. It's a really, really, really good bug. If you want, tie it with a tungsten cone. Um, it dives super quick that way. And I promise those are the last flies on jig hooks. Um, the next bug is the handy dandy, timeless classic. That is a Klauser minnow. This bug catches more freaking bass and every fish everywhere than probably any fly ever created. Um, you can fish it in salt, you can fish it in fresh, you can fish it for bass, trout, anything, literally any fish that exists on this planet can be caught probably with a Klauser minnow. Maybe not a grass cart, sorry Kyle. Um, but, so this, there's a little trick to this that I never knew. Um, you put a big ball in the back, right, or not in the back, sorry, right in front of, or behind where your eyes will go, and it keeps your barbell eyes seated so much more firm, more firmly, than it does if you just tie them with just a little bit of thread. Add some glue, and you just place the barbell eyes right in front of the bump. It buds your eyes against it, so now those aren't going anywhere. With a little dab of glue, you're, you're good to go. Um, so, from what I've experienced, and I think there's a consensus among salt guys with this pattern, um, more is definitely less. You always want to tie these pretty sparse because you lose a lot of the movement of your bucktail if you tie it too thick. Another thing, bucktail smells like ass because it is literally like right around the butt of the deer. So just for those of you who have never tied with bucktail and had a rude awakening like I did a couple years ago, um, just be prepared for the stinkiest material of all time. And that's just a classic Clouser minnow and white and chartreuse. Pretty well known bass colors, white and chartreuse. Um, the fly tying video today at the golf course that Kyle works at. It's raining, which is fine. But we gotta test the flies, obviously. So, we're testing the flies. Bass flies. No bass in here, though. No bass. Literally nothing. Look at that baby. Just a classic Clouser minnow. But one of the essentials. Look at that form. Look at that butt. Honestly, when I go bass fishing, I don't ever really fish anything other than these three flies. Um, I don't really see a need to. You, you kind of hit the whole range of their major food sources. I mean, obviously, you could tie those plastic worm flies that have foam in the tail and pull, your, pull the worm up. But if I wanted to fish that, I'll just fish conventional gear. I'd rather be stripping something fast that's a bait fish pattern or a crawfish pattern. And then when they hit, you know, they, they smack it, and that's kind of my the big appeal that bass have to me at least. But everybody has different reasons why they fish for different things. 
Um, but yeah, so those are the three patterns that we recommend the most. Um, we're gonna try and shoot another video here in a little bit. Um, I would fish crayfish patterns that are, you know, fish things that you can fish low and slow because the metabolism quite, hasn't quite picked up for a lot of these warm water species yet. But um, yeah, we're gonna try and shoot a little video once we have some better conditions out and the fish start eating a little bit more. But yeah, sweet. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to us on YouTube. Thanks.